in the age of innovation, disruption, transformation, I've often seen CXOs and organizations lamenting about this fact that we are data rich, information poor, inside star. We are data rich, information poor, inside star. Can you help solve our problem? Until now, solving the problem was fine. Recently, because of the advent of artificial intelligence, it's become, can you help us take decisions? And this is great. The whole aspect of decision making in the organizations, for humanity, for society, is getting changed. In the last 15 years, we've seen marked changes in terms of how data deluge has happened, digital detonation has thrown unprecedented challenges for the organization. One flight from JFK to London throws about 10 terabytes of data. And this was just one terabyte a few years back. Just to give an example of what a zettabyte means, one zettabyte is equivalent to all the video titles on Netflix multiplied by 470 million times. This is the quantum of data what organizations cannot ignore. Velocity, variety, veracity has always been there. But what's more prominent today is how do you start making meaning out of this? And this is where we say that eventually, it's all about how the organizations are trying to work in terms of making analytics and artificial intelligence more pronounced. Data is the new oil, digital is the new currency. What's the dimension over there? There are three dimensions when it comes to this whole digital detonation. We are all trying to reimagine the customer experience. We're all trying to look at how do we innovate product and services. And through this entire surface of challenges, we're also trying to transform our business models. And this is where artificial intelligence comes to the risk. There are interventions today, there are applications today where sophistication in image, voice, text, and video are throwing unprecedented scenarios for the organizations and humans to start taking what we say right judicious decisions. But if this was not enough, we are always saying that unless data is rightly harnessed, harvested, and massaged, resulting into insights, intelligence, and recommendations, we will always have issues. We have seen how organizations today have used data for the wrong reasons, how they've harvested data not to get the right results, which doesn't influence the population in the right way. And this is where we're saying that eventually, we are trying to get into a situation where many of the organizations today are turning into math houses. Uber, Netflix, Airbnb, Google, these are organizations which are not just asset light. Their main secret sauce is an IP patented algorithm which runs the magic for them. And that magic simply is not in just the algorithm, it's the self-learning, self-intuitive ability for algorithms to course correct and personalize for you, you and me is the quality where these algorithms are making the difference. Now, when an algorithm shows those insights, intelligence, and recommendations, what happens? Think of a scenario. Eventually, in the near vicinity, and maybe in the very near future, we're talking about a scenario just like today. We trade in scripts, stocks, on the NSC, DSC, and different stock exchanges across the globe. There is a very likely possibility of algorithms being traded in the marketplaces. An organization having challenges in terms of customer acquisitions, having issues in terms of churning of their employees, want to mitigate the risk management of their organization. You go to the algorithm marketplace, you look at the different scenarios in terms of what kind of algorithms are available which are solving those business challenges. You run a test mode, 
you run those hypotheses, you like those hypotheses and say, look, I want to look at this model becoming patented for me. That's the part of algorithm with the democratization of data we're talking about in the time to come. Now, what it means for us, enterprises, and also in terms of humanity, we're talking about decision making, getting influenced by the usage of algorithms. This task of time is the most revolutionary when we talk about the advent of artificial intelligence. We'll never see a scenario where one technology for artificial intelligence has backed so much of limelight optics from organizations and from humanity. 28 organizations today are talking about curating their AI strategy and policy, of course. But as we say that it's not just about algorithms, somewhere the decision making in the boardrooms can start happening if there is an X Mr. Algorithm sitting virtually maybe taking decisions on the behalf of board members or the CXOs and saying then, look, this is where you can go wrong. And as we say that, eventually, coming to the decision making, human beings are predictably irrational. Majority of the decisions we take today are influenced by our intuition, gut, by our spouses, friends, and colleagues. Think of a scenario where decision making starts happening because of the algorithms which are running personalized for you. You can take those decisions, you can actually have that ability for that algorithm to self-intuitive have those decisions for you. And this is where we say how artificial intelligence in terms of perceiving, act, and kind of let's say behaving starts mimicking the human brain. What we are also talking about is if we have to leverage this aspect of sound decision making, leveraging artificial intelligence, what it means. There is a trifactor. We talk about augmenting the intelligence. We talk about automation and learn. And we also talk about the most neglected aspect of what we say incorporating the human behavior. When we talk about augmenting the intelligence, we are talking about taking the non-obvious sources of data to make those sound decisions. An earning call by an organization, every three months it happens, the quarter results are displayed, demonstrated by the CEOs, and what they are trying to articulate and narrate are the set of financial projections, what their companies would be in the time to come, or what they stand to do. But organizations are going beyond and saying, look, if there is a lump in the throat, if there is a sign of weakness in terms of facial expression, is the CEO right in terms of what he or she is saying in terms of the numbers? And if the CEO is right in terms of narrating a number, but the CFO at the back is poker face and straight, there's something wrong about that organization. We're also talking about an aspect where how artificial intelligence used in the right way for humanity has solved multiple problems. The gentleman out there is Saqib Sheikh, born and bred up in Pakistan, visually impaired from birth. He's working with Microsoft. And a few years back, Microsoft and Saqib came with this experiment. Let's make your life nice, a magical experience. So Saqib, whenever he steps out, wears a set of glasses. These glasses have innate ability to capture pictures on the go. And these pictures, when translated into words on a real-time basis, can easily mean for Saqib that, Saqib, 10 meters ahead of you, there is a 15-year-old kid, maybe, wearing a kind of a beige trouser and blue jersey on a skateboard. Would you like to meet him? This is where decision-making, leveraging artificial intelligence, comes to the picture. We also talked about how today healthcare is getting revolutionized in terms of artificial intelligence. Chest X-rays, MRI, CT scans, close to about 15 symptoms can go wrong in chest. Now think about radiologists, how they're trying to kind of solve this thing. An average radiologist takes about 15 minutes to analyze an X-ray. The same job can be done by a deep learning algorithm 
using millions of x-rays of the past of the same patient in few milliseconds. And the first question, all of us will ask, what's the job of a radiologist? This is where we say, when we talk about artificial intelligence, what an aspect of capturing a real-time feed can take into consideration. Now this feed, when we talk about taking a cue, is a final of a Super Bowl match. A Super Bowl match, close to about $160 billion of ad spend happens in one Super Bowl match. One TV commercial costs about $4 million. The first question, a CMO gets asked on the very next day by the CEO, I did not see our brand. But what happens in the video, in this 10 second ad, close to all the brands what you could see on the jersey of the players, on the turf of the stadium, on the aisles of the player gallery is getting labeled, annotated, using sophisticated marketing mix model, where the CMO will say, Mr. CEO, these were the brands which got flashed, and this is where our brand stands as well. Decision making gets more amplified. The other scenario when we talk about automation. 7,000 deaths happen in US because of wrong prescription of drugs and medicine. $14 billion of lawsuits gets filed. One of the pharmacy stores in the US deployed this robotic arm not to just fetch medicines, which it could do very, very nicely, but the robotic arm also scans the prescription and few milliseconds digs out all the symptoms, all the previous drugs, and the kind of, let's say, prescription that patient needs to take. The human error gets minimized. In both examples, an often question gets asked, what is the job of a radiologist? What's the job of a pharmacist? Well, in the whole history of mankind, learning comes in terms of what we say, what we do. Learning in terms of a radiologist's job and a pharmacist is not to analyze x-rays or to give medicines. It's about the well-being, counseling of the patient. That's the level of change of the jobs which will happen through automation. We're talking about replacement of tasks and daily chores by automation, not in terms of the jobs. Distracted driving, biggest issue in India, many of the countries, including US, two seconds it takes for a driver to get distracted. What organizations, in terms of car manufacturers, are trying to do, through placing cameras in the cars, they're trying to understand the behavior, possible behavior of driver when he or she could go wrong, and alarming through a panic button that, look, you are on the wrong side in terms of driving, in terms of your mind or behavior getting distracted. Decision making gets amplified by artificial intelligence. The piece around which we often say is neglected today is human behavior. Humans, as we all say, are predictably irrational. But what gets amplified where rules and regulations don't work, subtle nudges, subtle indications in terms of how we consume product and services gets more enhanced if human behaviors are nudged. And this whole theory which got recently amplified by Dr. Richard Taylor winning the Nobel Prize, is all about what we say that, take an instance, an oral B2 brush gets fitted with an IoT sensor, there is an app which you can download on the mobile. Now, many of us may not be aware, an idle brushing time is two minutes. And for the kids, it's a daunting task. And for parents, we have realized for some of us that kids don't brush for two minutes. How about loading this app and doing that brushing with the IoT sensor where the kid, not kind of knowing in terms of the brushing time, can actually see the time elapsed. So if it's less than two minutes, the emoji on the screen turns red. And today we all know that how much our lives are governed by emoticons. And the kid seeing an emoji which is red, frowning in the morning, is an enough indication for him and her to say, 
let me brush again. And the moment it's about two minutes plus, there is a jingle on the app and emoji turns happy. Now that's a different thing. This particular app is being used by more adults than the kids because brushing time is not happening for two minutes. Governments have done to stop pedestrian not crossing the road when they are not supposed to have a road out. But I think if you look at this small nudge where the sheer instance of looking at the experience of death can deter pedestrian in terms of not crossing the road, where just an image of how death looks like when it's approached by a screeching sound being captured on the camera and getting displayed on the billboard next is an enough indication for that pedestrian to say, I will not cross the road. And this is where we say, when you look at the entire aspect of augmenting the intelligence, automate and learn, and incorporating human behavior, decision making gets changed. On any given day, an average human being takes about 60 odd decisions. Strategic, tactical, operational. Think of all these scenarios where decision making gets more amplified by using human behavior, automation and learn, and also in terms of what it means for the humanity. And when we say, at some level, we are all going to the retail force today. This jingle may not sound so absolutely identical or resonating with us. But when played in a retail store, to our subconscious mind, there is yearning for us to go to this part of the store where ice creams are kept. And through this right jingle placement in the right form of the store, this retail chain increased the sales of the ice creams by 30% in three months. Now, this is where we say, when you start looking at those subtle nudges, the humanity takes different decisions. It's all about human thoughts. Thank you.